Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Happy Independence Day, everyone. Today's topic, I thought it would be fun to talk about our most patriotic bird. And, uh, when I say that, a whole lot of you, uh, I'm sure your mind went straight to the bald eagle. Well, yes, the bald eagle, of course, is our national symbol. And yeah, it is truly a, a symbol of patriotism to a lot of us. But I am talking about the Eastern Bluebird. And actually, you can probably lump in the Western Bluebird into this conversation, too, because it's our red, white, and blue birds. Yes, the, 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 especially the males with their brilliant blue back and their rufous red chests and white bellies. The uh, Eastern Bluebird is basically our flying flag. Uh, and people love Eastern Bluebirds. And, and I... I've done lots of programs on uh, bluebird nest boxes and, and feeding bluebirds in winter and, 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 and lots of that. But I haven't done a real species profile on the eastern bluebird. So what I thought I would do is take us through the, the bluebirds and kind of do a, a, a species profile overview. So uh, the eastern bluebird, uh, which is uh, a favorite of many people, especially the eastern two-thirds of the the U.S. And, and the western bluebird in the western third of the U.S., where they, they occur, their ranges are, uh, are favorites. They have beautiful songs. They're members of the thrush family. So they are related to the robins. Uh, and when you hear them sing, you hear the similarities in their voices. That they, they are classic thrush-like sounds. Here's the eastern bluebird. Truly beautiful song. And remember, I use Sibley's uh, birding app uh, for the pictures and for the, uh, the the sounds whenever I'm studying birds and clarifying things. I love that app. But the, that beautiful song, and, and it's so sad. that they, uh, it, It's written in literature that at the turn of the last century, not this century, but the last century, that bluebirds were as common as robins in urban areas. They were truly a, a yard bird, very common. Uh, and of course, their demise is pretty famously documented and uh, been a lot of reasons for their decline, not, not uh, at least of which, of course, was the introduction of European starlings and house sparrows and competition for their nests because they are cavity nesters. They build their nests in old cavities um, and at old woodpecker holes typically, but also knot holes where a tree limb breaks off. And once starlings and house sparrows, both of which are cavity nesters as well, were introduced into this country, they started taking over uh, those houses. They're much more aggressive than bluebirds are, and uh, it, it, it's very, very tough on them. So that was, of course, the origin of the Bluebird Nest Box program. And a lot of you are bluebird landlords. You do love your bluebirds and you are very dedicated to checking uh, their their nest and, and, and helping them out. And uh, it, it, we and the bluebirds thank you for that because, uh, you know, when we cut down the dead trees and we cut down dead limbs and, and where you settle areas, those are the places where the, the cavities used to be and they're you have to substitute that with to help them with an, uh, an artificial cavity. And the Bluebird Box Program is very, very successful in that. And we've got whole videos on nothing but the nest boxes and how to want it, how to make them, how to place them, and how to help the bluebirds out. In our area right now, 4th of July, uh, we have uh, some bluebirds that are already in their third nesting. They've already pulled off a two. They started fairly early this spring. The weather was uh, mild uh, in the late winter, so they got a good early start this year. And this year, this is the kind of year they could even pull off four nests. It's even possible. And, of course, I always want to make you to remember, clean that nest out of that nest box every time because they – they will add to that nest and build that nest higher and higher uh, and it gets dangerous for them inside there uh, for the predators can reach in there and uh, you, you want to help them out. And then, of course, if there's any feather lice in the, in the last nest, it'll pass on to the, the, the new nest. So you want to clean it out and use gloves. Be careful when you clean them out because they can, can be feather lice in there, which is not fun to get all over your hands, I can tell you done that before. So back to the bird. Okay. The male uh, eastern bluebird, and they are thrushes. They're insect eaters. They subs uh, on 
uh, berries in the winter. So landscaping, native landscaping is a really good idea to help them out and to keep them happy during the winter. And uh, they, they eat lots of uh, caterpillars and, and, and bugs and, and worms. And for people, I've told the story of how people come in and they, they do everything they think is right. And uh, they, they, they under, don't understand why they can't get bluebirds in their yard. And remember, bluebirds like open country with scattered trees. I always say picture a, a golf course or a, a city park where the grass is kept short and there are scattered trees for them. They love that. They, they're perch hunters. Not like the robins run along the ground, very famously, of course, and reach down and, and pull the worms out. Or uh, bluebirds are perch hunters and they fly down into the short grass, grab the bug or the worm they uh, got their eye on and bring it back up, uh, which is a bit different than the, the robin technique. But that's why they do like shorter grass. They like short grass. That's why urban areas have actually been good for them when one of two things. They, you keep their nesting cavities available for them and you don't treat your yards for bugs. Um, I started that story with the people saying, oh, I don't, I don't have any bluebirds. And I remember one one person uh, years ago, and 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 she did it, it, the box is right, face right, sounds like you know great yard for it. And then Ruth said, "Well, do you have a lawn service?" And she said, "Oh yeah, we spray for everything." So they're killing all of the bugs and the caterpillars that the bluebirds need to feed their babies. And she couldn't understand why the bluebirds wouldn't nest there. So you have to, you know, have bugs. I, I, I think I did a. Uh, shared a post the other day said a world without bugs is a world without birds because they have to have them, especially this time when they're feeding their babies. It, uh, it's an incredible growth rate in the bones and everything and feather growth. They need lots of ca calcium, which is keratin, which is what the, the insect skeletons are made out of. So so what they'll do, they, you know, they get, whatever the process is where you're at, they typically lay one, one egg a day for five days or four days, depending on how many she's going to lay. Sometimes only three, especially when the weather gets really hot. Um, and then, of course, those uh, those eggs, after she incubates them for about 12 days to 14 days, just depending upon temperature and things like that, where you are, they will hatch and uh, you'll get little uh, helpless babies like this. And don't worry. I mean, uh, they mom is very dedicated and she will brood them. Uh, even if it's, if it's cooler or they're raining outside, she uh, she broods them. And remember how uh, I've said this before in my uh, nesting programs, how the birds pull out feathers, the moms pull out their down feathers on their chest to create a brood patch so that her bare skin is on, in contact with the eggs and in contact with the babies. That way she's transferring her heat to them, which they need uh, to develop. And then they, uh, after another 12 to 14 days of incubating, uh, they, hat well, they, they hatch, and then the 12, 14 days after they hatch, of the nestling size, they are ready to fledge, and they emerge, and uh, mom and dad uh, teach them how to find food, and that is either uh, in, in insects in, in, in the wild, teach them how to hunt, or if you offer up mealworms in your yard, like this upper left picture, um, they, they bring in to the free mealworms, and they pass the food for them a little while, and then they learn to eat on their own. So the one I put this together because I wanted to show that relationship and how closely related they are to robins. Uh, you can see this is a juvenile or uh, just fledgling robin on the bottom right. And then this is a fledgling uh, bluebird with an adult bluebird feeding him. And you can see the spots on the chest uh, and they and the, eye, the white around the eye, the bill shape, they very, you can see they're both thrushes. They're very closely related on that. But once they learn to eat food like that, if right, they, it, that you're providing for them, then you can get, you can feed them uh, on a larger scale. They, they will eat uh, sunflower chips and peanut pieces and uh, bluebird nuggets and uh, mealworms, dried mealworms, live mealworms. Um, and you can get flocks of like this, but this is my, mainly in the winter. I mean, they, they, in the winter, a lot of uh, bluebirds move down from the north from here, that, that, in this region in south. A lot of bluebirds in the south in the winter months because uh, there's bugs moving there all year long. Plus, they'll settle into areas where there's good berry crops. So dogwood trees uh, that have lots of fruit on them and uh, cedar bushes, things like that. If there's a good, plentiful, we call it soft mass crop, then the bluebirds will settle in that area because they know that's a dependable food source. And they'll feed on insects when they can. They'll come to your feeders when they can, but they got that fallback 
uh, with your landscaping and uh, different kind of berries for them to eat. And that's, that's what they're going to do all winter. So the Eastern bluebird, you know, is again, one of the, the favorite birds, uh, in, in North America, and there's no secret as to why they're beautiful. They sing beautiful songs, um, and they and, and they they're the spirit animal for a lot of people. We were talking about spirit animals today at the store. Uh, a lot of people call the cardinal theirs, but I know a lot of people call the bluebird their spirit animal. So they're one of the favorite species in North America, and they are the red, white, and blue bird, our most patriotic bird, in my opinion. So. Uh, great idea for a program. If you've got another species you want me to talk about, uh, please send it in. Give us a like. Give us a share. And, of course, if you're on YouTube, we hope you subscribe. Hit that bell so you know when I'm going to be on next. Well, ten, until then, happy Independence Day, everyone. Uh, and until next time, come on, let's talk birds.